how do I go about this? Laws, tech, military, intrigue. Plot, revoke, hold. Aha! Kazad's on Heron, so plot. Revoke the hold of Kazad's on Heron. That's definitely what I want to try to do. I need some backers for this plot. Okay, so how do I get backers? I think I'm going to have to let some time pass to see if anybody wants to join me. in this, so we'll revisit this. Okay, so let's get some time moving here. Um, I think I'm just going to let some time pass. I think the orcs are going to do some things, and I don't think they'll declare war on us immediately, but uh, they might start fighting each other or various locations, but this is our goal. So let's just let some time pass. We'll set it on speed two, I guess. So you can see here, these are the days, so... Alright, Rise of the Undead. Rumors reach you that in Sylvania, a vampire lord by the name of Vlad von Karstein has summoned a massive army of undead and aims to make war on the fragmented empire. That is Grand Count Vlad of Sylvania. So, this is just letting us know of this big world event that's occurring, so pause the game. So that's what's happening up here. This is Sylvania. This is the Fractured Empire. It originally was one huge human empire, but it fractured into half a dozen different empires. And the vampire counts are going to rise up from Sylvania, raise up a huge undead horde, and start rampaging across the empire. So, it'll be interesting to see just how far they make it. <laughs> sometimes they take out the entire place, sometimes they get stopped. But that's far away from us. We aren't going to know anything about that except for the stories that uh, we get dispatches about. Okay, so we've got wealth, prestige, honor, our domain size. Oops, I just paused it because I just saw this orc army pop open. Uh, so the kingdom size, yeah, realm size and score. These are our notes. These are map filters for changing how the map looks. Okay, starting to remember some of this. So there's now an orcish army that has been ra raised. They haven't declared war on us, so they must be going after somebody else nearby. So if we open this up, right here it shows they are attacking Prince Megistos of Myrmidon. So I think that's these guys. Yeah, that's Myrmidon. So he's declared war against Myrmidon. So this might be a good time for us to actually go try to attack him. Might not be a good time. I don't remember how hard this fight's going to be. Um... Let's let the fight, his fight, go on for a little bit. So we'll let some time pass, see if that army moves out. Before I raise my own armies. I'm trying to remember what I can do in my infrastructure to make some changes to my uh, holdings. You can see we've gained a little bit of wealth, so we're gaining 4.21 wealth per month. Our prestige is also raising. So those are good. This is going to be our main income, and we're making money from our total county taxes. It has a lot. The economy is very, very complicated, so I can't explain it, and it's been too long since I've played. But uh, basically, we're making money from taxation and a few other things, and each territory is divided up into these holds. So we have a guild hall, we've got an ancestral shrine, we've got another ancestral shrine. This one has got just a guild hall. This one's a guild hall and a shrine. Each different location type has different focuses. So the guild halls, I think, are the uh, kind of like the fortified defense areas. So they don't have as good of an income, but they have a higher defense value. Um, well, I'm not quite. I may be misremembering. That's got base tax of 17.8 with a fort level of 6.9. So we're getting a lot more money out of the guild hall than we are the ancestral shrine. So this must be a merchant based. This is more balanced, I think. There's, I think, three different main types. I, I just can't remember. So 
we'll just let some more time pass and see what happens and then uh, make some decisions. I just want to do this first test game to kind of refamiliarize myself. I don't expect to do very well and we'll probably get crushed into the dirt pretty quickly by the orcs uh, while I figure things out, but we'll restart a few times if necessary. I've played it in the past when I did play it. I was able to reunite the kingdom, take over most of this coastline, put a pretty big hurt on the orcs, and uh, put some defensive stuff into place for the southern areas. What are these little... or some lines floating around in graphics, however. So I have played enough to know somewhat what to expect in general. It's just the micromanagement details. I've totally forgotten <laughs> all the details of how to play. This army, I think, is on the march, so I believe they're moving northwards. Let's turn the speed up some more. Yep, they have marched away. I can only see directly these two, because I've got adjacencies to them. Everything else is kind of grayed out. All right, so while they're at war, we're gaining some money. Well, they've sacked that. Some smoke rising from the village there. Let's go ahead and just declare a war. We're not very far into the game, so let's just make things messy and learn how to do things. All right, so... Uh, what we're going to do is go to this guy, make sure he's the boss. We're going to declare war. Uh, we're going to do... We've got a number of different reasons to go to war. We have to pick one of the reasons. They have different game effects. Um, I believe we want a reconquest war. A reconquest to gain counties that are not held by the dwarves or Norse dwarves. And are either inside du jour. Yeah, this is the one we want. This will transfer actual ownership. It's not just a raid to punish them and gain some gold and stuff. So we're going to do a reconquest war for Komar. Uh, oh, apparently I can't. We don't have at least 50 honor. What are we? Where are we at for honor? We're at 23 honor. All right, so we've got to raise our honor to 50 before it'll let me declare that war or wait for the orcs to try to come after me. Or I've got to pick some other reason that uh, doesn't have that honor requirement. So if we tried to do... No, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, we could do these. We could do the greenskin exterminations, but... I don't think it's independent, we're not bankrupt, we're not in a non-aggression pact, but I don't think that will let us take the actual territory necessarily. All right, if we win, King Kurgan takes occupied titles from him. Maybe it is the one we want. Let's give it a try. All right, so now we're at war. And you can see right here, defending against King Kurgan of Ekron. So he's got two fights going on. He's fighting this guy, and then we've just declared against him. So next step, we've got the war declared. We need to raise our levies. We need to raise our troops and soldiers. So let's go to the king. Actually, let's go to the military screen and do everything. Raise all of our personal levies. And then we're also going to command our vassals to raise their levies. Call all tribal and nomadic vassals to war. Hold control to call all allies to war. Alright, let's... This one should be fine. So this commands all of my vassals, the barons and counts and stuff that uh, rule their various areas to raise their local levies. So that's going to raise all of the armies, and we're going to tell them to all march to Zethrus. And I believe there's a mountain border here that prevents me from going like this. I think this border's here, and this border's here, but there's a uh, restriction right in here that I can't go across this way. We'll find out, though. And you'll see the red bars indicate that they're not yet supplied and ready, so we're going to march them into position. I probably would have been better to keep them back out of the area until they got fully ready to go, but since he had marched away, I thought this would be safe enough. Okay, now notice my army is a lot smaller than what his army had looked like earlier. And we're going to try to stay within just the mountain areas, I think. Alright, new message. Vassal levies raised too long. Yeah, too bad. 
they're basically unhappy that I've pulled away all their fighters. Alright, so you guys are all going to merge. So we now have a single army right here, made up of 626 archers, 1896 heavy infantry, 223... Um, I forget what they call these. They're, they have a name. Uh, Arcbasiers or something, but I've forgotten. Yeah, go ahead and do the expanded one. So this shows exactly where all of the armies are from. Your army is split into three sides. You've got a central uh, grouping, and then you have the flanks, the right and left flanks. We have a commander in charge of each section. So we've got Logan, our heir, commanding the center section. And it shows their martial skill. So Logan has got 19 martial, so he's great. He gives all sorts of benefits to that center section. Um, these other guys are pretty poor, so there are two commanders. I might need to go looking for better commanders because they're pretty bad. So there's your total count down here. So we've got 900 troops on the left, 982 in the center, and 866 on the right. Um, so let's... I don't know enough about the details to balance this much. We'll just leave it this way. And... We're all ready to go. Let's go ahead and march into his territory and see what happens. And bear with me a second. I'm going to pause the game and be right back. Okay. Alright, sorry about that. And just checking stream health real quick. Looks like... Something bumped up and it uh, went red for a second there, but I think we're still connected, so. Alright, so, um, here we are. We're occupying his territory. We're sieging down the territory, so this is a progress bar showing that uh, when our next siege attempt is going to occur, so it's going to build up as time passes, and we'll just let that happen. We can't see any of his armies yet. He may come storming back across the border when he sees us sieging his territory. Hello, army of Prince uh, Megistos. That's one of the Myrmidon armies, so they've marched around apparently. <laughs> I think, oh, now he's sieging him as well. All right, my liege, the people of Kemri have progressed beyond our own technological level. I have managed to study their advancements, and the documents enclosed here should help us reach level one. I hope you will find them this to your satisfaction. Great. So basically, we've got three chance or three possibilities. It's going to roll dice, percentage dice, and we're either going to gain 50 military technology points, 50 economic points, or 50 culture points. So that's the spy that we sent down south to study the uh, mummy necromancer lords. He's basically stumbled across some technology that he's sending back home information-wise. So uh, we're going to gain some tech points, which is great. Um, which is these? That's the technology. So right here are the points that we've got currently. So what is that? 18.1, 21, and 12. So we'll say OK. Right there, we gain 50 points in our eco economic points that we can spend to improve these various things. Oh, and we also just want to fight. Oh, let's pause the game. All right, so we have victory, siege of the Komar tribe, and we can see the attacks and uh, losses and so on, what kind of defenders they had, and dwarves fighting in mountains, we've got really high chance to win. So I'm not real happy about him being over here now because I want to take all three of these territories and he's going to cause me a problem. <laughs> so we'll move down to the next territory though with our army. Alright, and I like this territory because it's smack dab in between everything. He's got to come through me to get anywhere within his connecting territories. So. 
Look, there's his army right there. So these two guys are ignoring each other. The orcs are sieging down his play, uh, Myrmidon's territories, and then the Myrmidon's army is sieging the orc territory. Um, they're going to have to meet each other and fight eventually, but I'm going to avoid uh, any fights as long as I can. I want to stay in the mountain ranges if possible, because that's where most of the bonuses for the dwarves are uh, centralized. So I would like him to come back to me if possible. All right, so let's see. The, is he going to come this direction, or is he going to head and try to continue conquering over here? Looks like he doesn't want any part of the dwarven army in the uh, fighting in the mountains. Now my problem is going to be I'm going to have to come up to this territory as well. In which case, the orc army might come back to uh, retake this central se section. All right, now we've got offense or defense. That is the question. Uh, spirited charge will break any line. Dead men do not go to fight another day. A solid rock breaks the best steel. My men will be that rock. Or no, I seek another area of expertise. This is our king, so we basically can pick. It's going to give us either the trade aggressive leader, defender, or unyielding. Um, and you can see the effect. So an aggressive leader is going to get plus 25% bonus to pursuing, plus 10% damage, but minus 10% on defense. Defender is going to gain a big defense bonus, but less damage. And Unyielding is going to give Morale Defense uh, plus 20 and uh, Standard Military Defense a plus 10. Um, morale is very important. You want to have high morale so your troops fight better during combats. So um, I might go with just the Solid or the Morale Defense. Dwarves pursuing people just doesn't sound right to me. <laughs> so. Let's go ahead and let's do unyielding. That sounds more like a dwarvish trait. And we've just about got the defenses down. Oh, there's a fight going on there. It looks like Myrmidon's going to get his butt kicked. We just won this territory as well. So now I have to decide. I don't want to split my army. I'm debating popping over into this territory or let's not. Let's just go over to here. We'll see what happens. Yep, as soon as I decided to go here, he came. he's deciding to come across, so I'm going to cancel my move and watch. He'll cancel as well, probably. Nope, he's still coming. Looks like we're going to get a fight. Alright, here we go. So, more than 2 to 1 odds in his favor is what it looks like, but it's mountains, and you can see all of the plus defense bonuses um, that we're getting. So we're getting huge bonuses that way. And if we should be a way of clicking on something to get the there we go. So this is the battle screen. So go ahead and show the flanks. All right. So this is him up here. This is ours down here. And this way we can see the progress. Let's turn the speed down. All right, so he chose a shield wall tactic, skirmish tactics. So each of your commanders has their own d distinct control of their flank. They're going to pick their own tactics to use during the fight. If a flank is empty, he's now assisting into the center. So both of these are now fighting the central uh, flank. And that's why it's important to have strong leaders in each position. So you can see here the arrow shows that he's assisting into the center. These guys are fighting directly. These guys are encountering directly. So this sh I believe we're going to win this fight. Even though, like I said, we're outnumbered 2 to 1. And a large part of that are these bonuses. And just the generic bonuses that dwarves get for fighting in this kind of terrain. Let's see what else it will tell us. Damage values... There's different phases of combat. We're currently in skirmish phase. We'll let it advance here. And I think that's what the arrow indicator is. Uh, somebody, lore keeper, contracted Nurgle's rot. All right, can't do much about that. Skin drum. Okay. Uh, I thought this would go a little better for us. It's going to change a lot once we get this middle section down, so you'll see this flip pretty hard. 
Oh man, never mind, we're getting crushed. <laughs> yep, we got crushed. Alright, that didn't go so well. Oh, I think we won. Yeah, we actually won. So it looks like we got a victory somehow, um, mainly due to just the strength and toughness of our troops and the morale, the high morale that we had. So we forced a retreat out of them. So let's pause it and take a look here. So war score, we've got a bunch of war score, we've got prestige, gained honor, got some tech points, but we also lost 374 units versus he lost a thousand. So we're down to 1800. He's still got 3400. And that fight is over. Let's. We're going to have to stay in place. Now let's, let's go ahead and try moving. Where are you retreating to? You've got to be retreating over to here. Um, I'm really decide. I'm not sure whether it's best to sit here in place or to move and try to finish taking this, even though we're low. Let's let's move. Let's see what happens. Your marshal has initiated a massive recruitment drive in Ekrand. Great. Good to hear. Yep, that I know about. All right, let's turn the speed up so things actually get happening here. Uh, how is he retreating into a territory I control now? That's just wrong. Uh, cancel that move, chase him down over to here. And of course he starts moving as well. <laughs> I think he's faster than me. Well, let's see what happens. Alright, well that fight's going to go pretty well for us until they arrive, but they're so low now, they're out of morale, we're just going to start crushing them. Alright. I can't tell which way he's going. We're going to say to go to that one again. Uh, I think he's going to keep retreating out to other lands because he's got a shattered retreat. So yeah, so we're going to take advantage of that. All right, our, our spy had another success of some kind. All right, now we're sieging. Oh no, we don't have enough force. Damn it. That's not good. Oh, hello. When did I miss the message that we lost control here? <laughs> huh, well that's a big problem. Hmm, I didn't get a message. That's not that one. I'm not sure what's going on here. I thought I would get a message when I assume Simri died. That would be the only reason this would pass on, as far as I know. Hmm. Well, that's not cool. Now it's part of that kingdom, so I'm going to have to figure out how to deal with that. And that uh, lowered my vassal, or my count. So what's happening here is I don't have enough actual men to initiate a successful siege. I need more men. So the siege has been abandoned will not resume until the attacking force is larger than the defending one. So they've got 2,088 troops. I've got to get at least more than that in order to successfully uh, take that territory. So that's a problem because I don't think I can recruit enough to do that. Um, military... I don't think this will do anything. I've already got all the troops in the field that I can raise currently. I have no retinues. Hmm. So, how do I... If I offer peace... Force demands. Uh, 
Um, hmm. I'd rather do this in one go, but I'm not sure I'm going to be able to. I lost too many troops in that fight, and I can't quickly raise more troops, and especially with this uh, no longer being part of my kingdom. That's a big problem. That's one of the richer territories that I had. Um, I'm going to run into similar problems elsewhere. I don't think that has as many troops there, but... Right, let's, let's try. Let's go down here and see what happens. I am sieging that one. The problem here is this has got uh, fortified territories or fortified areas that uh, the orcs are hiding out in, so I need more troops than them to be able to successfully siege them. Alright, so took that one. Let's run over to this one and see if we can get that one. Uh-oh. Now I think I'm in trouble. Or boss Morbag of Toof Mountain Horde is called Boss Hail of Nazul into the Ekrundian Greenskin Extermination of Konor. Um, can I do the... I know there's something the dwarves have that allows them... It's under Intrigue. Summon the Throngs. Ah, I need honor. I've only got 60. I need 8 honor to summon the Throngs. And we also have to be a defender. And we have to have 80. I have to have 100 honor and be the defender. So I can't summon the throngs, unfortunately. So it may be that declaring that fight was too early. I should work on my infrastructure for a bit, let the orcs come after me, and as soon as they do, I can then summon the throngs, which gives me a huge influx of dwarves in my combat groups uh, with which to defend. And then while that's happening, declare a war on this group here. Uh, to retake the territory while I've got all those troops. So that's probably the better way to do this. Now I've got multiple armies running around here. Let's do this. He's moving up into my territory. Yeah, he just kept moving. Oh, I have enough troops now? Really? He must have moved troops out, I guess. Well, that works too. You can squat on my capital. It's going to take you forever to try to siege down a dwarven territory. That's what I thought. He just kept moving. All right. Well, if we can take this before he can retake either of these, which I'm hopeful of, then we're going to try to declare a peace and see if we can actually take all three of these. I don't care much about either. Well,. That one would be nice as a freebie, but I don't care so much about that one. It's wasteland, and I don't want to try to hold it anyway. Come on, finish the siege before he finishes his. Come on, <laughs> finish. It's important. Alright, we got it, so victory. Let's pause. Uh-oh, we had a bad event. How can I rely on my generals when their understanding of warfare is so lacking compared to my own? I could teach Gwaine a thing or two. Teach him to be unyielding. Oh, okay, not a bad thing. So I can basically instruct one of my courtiers in how to be a uh, unyielding. So give him the unyielding trait. So that's fine. All right, so we've got everything captured that I care about. Nereac, I don't care so much about. So let's see if we can bring this to a piece. Uh... Oh, so once that changes, I can press a claim. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. All right, back to this. So here, offer peace. Force demands is, I believe, what I want. So we're going to say yes to that. 
All right, we won. So we've taken the territories. They're not completely ours yet, though, because they've got these orc holdings in them, and they're still infested with orcs that we're going to have to get rid of them. So it's going to take a little bit of time to us for us to fully pacify these. And then we got a bonus. So the orcs had captured this originally, but uh, we managed to take it. So happy to see that. I'm not sure how that's going to affect us diplomatically with the previous owners. We'll see. Um, I also don't know just how valuable that was. Uh, yeah, not terribly valuable, but it's a good linchpin that we can use um, for other things. Okay.